Hey guys, welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we are talking the best-selling Korean skincare products of 2023 so far. Now, I always love filming this video when the best-selling lists come round, because I think that whilst not all of these products are my personal favourites, I always like to look at what other people, including you guys, are buying, try out the products that maybe I haven't experienced yet to work out, am I missing out on anything? Or are people wasting their money on buying multiple units of products that, honestly, I think we could do better? I'm going to talk through this top 10, share with you my own thoughts, feelings and opinions when it comes to each product. So sit back, relax, and let's top the top 10 best-selling Korean skincare. Now, before we get into this video, I would love to know if you could reinvent this list, what would be like your top two favourite Korean skincare items? Sound off in the comments section below and let me know. Whatever your thoughts on these products, if you enjoy these styles of like ranking and best-seller top tier lists, let me know by reaching down and giving the video a thumbs up and a like. This is honestly the best way of supporting me as a content creator because the more likes a video gets, the more widely YouTube distributes it on its platform. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so, so much. Now I've got a lot to get through because we're covering all 10 products in a lot of detail. So let's cut that waffle and delve straight on in. Now in positions 10 and 9, we have two Korean sunscreens. Now I think most people here in the West had their first experience with a Korean skincare product with one of their SPFs. We were kind of bowled over when we first tried Korean sunscreens. They were lightweight, they were elegant, they didn't have any tackiness left on the skin. You know, if I go back to my childhood and think about the sort of sunscreens we had access to here in the UK, they were thick, they were gloopy, you never wanted to wear them. Then we tried Korean sunscreens and thought, actually, these are moisturising, they're elegant on the skin, they make you want to reach for them every single day. So I'm not surprised that there are multiple features of Korean sunscreens in this list. In 10th place is this product. This is, if I've turned it the right way around, uh, the Tokobo Bio Watery Sun Cream. Um, now, this is a relative newcomer to the Korean SPF game, but one that people are really loving. Um, I think its appeal is because it's really lightweight in keeping with a lot of other Korean sunscreens. But it's also got some great calming and soothing ingredients too. It's vegan, and I know a lot of people are looking for plant-based alternative products, um, and this would obviously fit that bill. I do really love love it and it's a brand that's actually released their testing so you know what you're getting when it comes to true SPF value and that UVA protection too. I definitely applaud that transparency and you know what this is probably one of my favourite Korean sunscreens. If you see how this applies it is ridiculously lightweight it's almost like water on the skin and um, it's got no real meaningful scent to it. Um, there's no artificial fragrance in here but there are some plant extracts that give almost a bit like a chamomile scent to it. I think, yeah, I think that would be the closest descriptor, but it calms, it soothes, it feels gorgeous on the skin, and I'd say it gives that perfect balance between too matte and too dewy. It's just, yeah, like a really nice skin day. No ashiness, doesn't, you know, affect the hue of the skin, and I think this is definitely worthy of a top 10 position in any bestsellers list, and I'm really glad that people are waking up to just how wonderful this product is. I'll link this, as I will all the products mentioned in the description box below, if you do want to check it out. But yeah, as Korean sunscreens go, this one, definitely one of the best. Now, the sunscreen in ninth position is this. This is the Dear Claire's All Day Airy Sunscreen. Now, when I was compiling this list, I actually looked at the top 10 best-selling products from a range of different Korean skincare retailers. One of them was Wish Trend, which is actually the brand that sits behind Claire's. So obviously, they promote their own products over some of the other ones, which can distort things a little bit. However, to keep it really fair when it comes to this top 10 list, I just chose the best-selling product from each brand so that we don't have multiple features from each brand cropping up throughout the list. This is the best seller from the Dear Claire's line um, and this surprised me a little bit because honestly I'm not a huge fan. Dear Claire's were caught up in the original Korean sunscreen scandal when the their original um, sunscreen was found to not be delivering the SPF that the brand claimed. They really didn't apologize for that. They didn't really do anything to rectify it. They gave some limited uh, refunds and returns, but beyond that, I just, I don't know, I expected more. However, when this came out, I knew that it would become a bestseller, so I thought, let's try it and see what it's like. Honestly, really not impressed. So this is not light. It's not airy like it claims. It actually leaves quite a dewy, almost greasy look to the skin. If you like super glossy, then this might be the one for you. But yeah, it just comes across as greasy and I find that that builds throughout the day. It's also got a really unpleasant smell. It smells like PVA glue when it's drying on your skin. <laughs> Nobody wants that. It is fragrance free. So if you're avoiding artificial fragrance, th this would work for you. But the scent, 
found out, and it lingers. That gluey smell lingers for the longest time. Um, it's fine, but it's quite expensive for the amount that you get. I prefer that Tacobo one way, way more. And yeah, I know why people tried this, and I understand why it's a bestseller, because they love the original, but this, honestly, I don't think is worthy of the hype. Now, in at number eight is the Dr. Ja Sikapair Tiger Grass Colour Correcting Treatment. Had to write that down because that is the longest possible name. Now, I haven't actually tried this product, but I know why it's on the bestsellers list because this has gone viral on TikTok with everyone like saying how amazed they are with this. You know, you put a little bit on the skin and it's designed to match your um, exact skin tone, give you some balance, colour correction, take away any redness. People have gone mad for it. Um, I think it's good, but I think it's a bit overhyped. You know, this isn't the only colour corrector out there. There are so many different ones and applying you know like a greenish hue on top of any redness will cancel it out if you look at like the color wheel and color theory and all of that so it definitely works but I think for people to treat this like it's the world's first it's not there are other ones out there and this is nice it's got some calming and soothing ingredients too which will again help to minimize any redness in the first place but I think it's quite pricey for a colour corrector. You could go into a lot of drugstores and buy a green colour corrector and get a very similar outcome to this. So I think the reason it's on this bestsellers list is because of the hype and the viral videos that you see over on TikTok. I personally wouldn't reach for this. I'd go for something cheaper. But if it works for you, sign off in the comments section below and let me know. Now in at number seven is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Niacinamide Dew Drops. Um, not surprising that this is the best seller from the Glow Recipe collection, but I was really quite surprised to see it on a lot of Korean best-selling lists because this isn't actually a Korean brand. It's definitely Korean inspired and um, I know that the founders, the creators, you know, really use that Korean skincare ethos to come up with these products. So a lot of people do consider it to be a Korean skincare brand but they're based out of the States. So it's technically not but the reason I allowed it for a pass on this is that definitely the ethos behind the brand is with that Korean skincare in mind. This is their best seller and people go mad for it. So it gives them that glass skin, that juicy complexion that they crave. I honestly didn't get on very well with this. Um, I thought it was over fragranced, which put me off. It lingered all day. It had a lot of niacinamide, which my skin just tended to react to. Though that's unique to me. My skin doesn't tolerate a lot of niacinamide. And I thought this made me appear greasy rather than dewy and did start to break me out if I used it every single day. So I can't say that my experience with this was particularly positive, but don't let you know my experience dictate whether you reach for this or not. If you love it, let me know. I just think, with, in keeping with the whole Glow Recipe range, the packaging is beautiful, but I think they tend to repeat ingredients step after step after step. It gets a little samey, and I think they're overpriced for what they're actually delivering. Now, I'm going to have to duck and cover, because I worry you're all going to come for me, because I know Glow Recipe has some cult fangirls. Everyone loves the brand, and maybe, I, maybe I'm the outlier. I just haven't tried anything from them that's really impressed me that much. I think they're expensive for what they are, and I think it's a little bit, I don't know, people always seem to give them a pass for being really heavily fragranced, even though people will say, I don't use fragrance in my skincare routine. Oh, but I love Glow Recipe. I'm like, really? Really? I, I don't know. I, for me, there's a lot of reasons I personally don't shop them, but I would say if you're going to look at the Glow Recipe range, I think there are some better products than this Dew Drops one, which for me, honestly just didn't work. But you got a different experience? Let me know in the comments because I really do want to get that conversation going. In at number six is the ubiquitous always appears on these lists, La Neige Lip Sleeping Mask. Now, there are like 46, I think at the last count, different flavors and scents um, of this option. And I think when these websites rank them, they kind of combine the sales of all of these different varieties into one, which is why it appears so high on most of these lists. Um, people love this. I I don't. <laughs> I just don't. Laneige, not my favourite brand. They're not cruelty free, which is the main reason I don't shop with them. But I also don't think there's anything in this product that's going to give you any meaningful hydration that you couldn't just get from a much more affordable lip product. Um, they say it's like a lip sleeping mask. You wake up and in a lot of ways, your lips are drier in the morning than if you hadn't applied this. That was at least my experience. Some people like it. I think the best way to do it, if you do like this product, is to put some of it on, let it sink in, then put some Vaseline on top. I think that dials up the level of hydration on its own, honestly, you could just go and buy a drugstore, an affordable lip balm, and I think you would get far better results than you did with this. Just my personal preference, but not a fan. Um, I've only actually tried the original, which I think was the berry um, flavor of it. Uh, to, to be fair, it was actually quite a nice like scent and flavor to it. I um, haven't tried any of the others, so if you've got some personal favorites, let me know. But for me, yeah, I think we can do better at a lower price point, and hopefully this will start. It used to be a lot higher up. If I look at last year's bestsellers, it was higher up. So I think it's slipping down. People 
love kind of the gloss, pardon the pun, the gloss has come off the Laneige lip product. And I, hope that, I think that's good that that's the case. Cheaper options available that are cruelty free and Laneige, nothing to see here. Now in at number five is a new addition that wasn't on last year's bestseller list and it's the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Refining Serum. Now there's a couple of reasons this has become a bestseller. Vogue featured it very heavily throughout the year. I think they called it like their number one serum. Lots of people are promoting it online saying how wonderful it is. The brand in general is really well liked and loved and honestly I've had great experiences with them. I haven't actually tried this specific serum because it's got quite a lot of niacinamide in and like I said when we we're talking about glow recipe my skin doesn't do well or tolerate a lot of niacinamide and so there's no point me trying a product that I know my skin is going to react to it's kind of setting it up for failure so I didn't really want to do that and um, so I haven't tried this but judging by people's before and afters that I've seen in videos and what people are saying about the product this is a holy grail for a lot of people and I think it's going to be growing in popularity and shooting up this best sellers list and um, the ingredients that it's got in there so you've got some peach extract you've got hyaluronic acid you've got niacinamide some calming and soothing ingredients kind of nothing like ground breaking earth shattering in there but I think that combination the way it's formulated does give your skin a really nice plumping that juiciness and glass skin is a huge trend I thought we'd seen the back of it in 2022 but it's kind of making a resurgence you know that's when you have that beautifully smooth it's often called like a glazed donut skin I've heard people call it now it's where you kind of look constantly moist <laughs> that's not for me I'm super oily I don't want to look greasy all day long but I know a lot of people do like that and I think this is probably one of the most effective serums to get that look if that's your preference certainly nothing in here that I would avoid in terms of the ingredients list and yeah I expect the popularity of this product to grow as I do the entire peach and lily line because they have some really really good products now in at number four is this product the skin 1004 Madagascar Centella Ampule again not surprised it's on a bestseller list everyone's been going mad for this for like the past two years. I am late to this party because I only picked this up about a month ago and I honestly regret not trying it sooner. It is beautiful. Not only does it look gorgeous, I mean on the vanity this looks stunning. This is actually into my second bottle because I do tend to go through it quite quickly but it calms, it soothes, it hydrates, it does everything Centella should um, but unlike some other Centella serums it's got a really high concentration so you're kind of getting what you pay for packed full of that key ingredient. I love it. It's a little bit more expensive than I would normally pay for a serum, but I think it's worth it for the look, for the experience, and the fact that it's not sticky or tacky on the skin at all. If you have a Centella serum in your routine that feels really tacky on application and you don't enjoy that, try this instead. You won't have any of that and you get a really nice boost to the hydration levels and the plumping of the skin. I wish I discovered this like two years ago because I am loving it, loving it, and it just, yeah. It just brings me joy when I see it on the vanity and I cannot wait to use it on my skin. Now, drum roll please, because we're heading into the top three. And in third place is the Cosrx Advanced Snail 96 Power Essence. Now, if I hadn't made it the case that it was just one product per brand in this list, Cosrx would feature an awful lot more. Um, they have some really great, they introduced their higher potency serums, which have been selling really well, like a 23% vitamin C. They have a higher strength niacinamide and stuff. People are loving their Cosrx products. Um, it's not a brand that I necessarily shop with a whole lot, but I'm not surprised to see their power essence high up on this list. People sing its praises, say how hydrating it is, how it even helps to even out their skin tone and fade discoloration. I absolutely detest snail mucid. I, I don't like the texture, I don't like the thought of the snail secretion. I'm not fully sold on it being particularly ethical when they harvest it, different opinions on that and different brands have different approaches. So I won't go into that in too much detail, but in the back of my mind, it's kind of, none of that sits well, which is why I personally don't reach for this product. But the couple of times I've tried it, it definitely does hydrate. It definitely does plump out the skin and it does calm and soothe at the same time. Haven't used it consistently enough to actually say whether it helps with hyperpigmentation, but you guys always say that it's one of your go-to. I'm not surprised to see it on this list. And I would say if you're loving it, continue to use it. If you've never tried it, it might be worth a go. I didn't care for it and I don't care for snail mucin, but I know so many people get great results from it. So why not? Because it's affordable and you definitely get something extra with this in terms of the high concentration of that key ingredient. Now, the top two positions go to two sunscreens. It's kind of like the bookends of this. We had in ninth and 10th position were Korean sunscreens. First and second position, 
Korean sunscreens. And they're personally two of my favorites. It's these two. In second position is this, the Beauty of Joseon Rice Relief Sunscreen. Not surprised, this sells so many units and is honestly one of my favorite, favorite sunscreens. And in first position is the Madagascar Centella Hilux Seeker Water Fit Sun Serum from Skin 1004. Now I am breaking my own rule because that means we've had two products from Skin 1004. The reason I did it is this was in first place. So I feel like I made an exception for them and I love both products. Um, but this, yeah, Beauty of Joseon one I've already covered. I'll leave a short video up there if you want to see that in action and talk about why I love it so much. And um, the Skin 1004 would probably be my favorite Korean sunscreen screen ever. It's gorgeous. It has a very similar finish to the Beauty of Joseon, but I'd say it's ever so slightly more matte in terms of the finish on the skin. But where I think it's elevated is this pump. You get a great pump dispenser, meaning it's really easy to use, much less mess. And um, I also like the fact that this is much calming and soothing. It has some great beneficial ingredients and can act as a moisturizer and a sunscreen all in one. I am thrilled that this is the best selling Korean skincare product because I want everyone to experience this. Try it out because I know you will love it. Definitely one of my favorites. And if I do a little bit of a test for you guys so you can see how it applies, it's slightly thicker than the two sunscreens I swatched earlier, but that gives it some extra hydration, which I personally love. But look, oh, look at that finish on the skin. It is, it almost has a blurring effect, which I really, really do enjoy. And yeah, it's divine. There is zero scent to it. So if you're very, obviously it's fragrance free, but if you are sensitive to scents in general, there's nothing really noticeable about this, which I love. And I would say, if you're in the market to try a new Korean sunscreen, reach for that Skin 1004 one, because you will love it, as according to this list, everyone else seems to be too. So there you have it, guys, the rundown of the top 10 best-selling Korean skincare products, here in the West at least, for 2023. Were you surprised by anything in this list? Are any of your favorites missing? Let's get that conversation going in the comments section below, and wherever you are in the world, guys. Stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye!